Hey everyone, if you didn't see in our last video, we just picked up this beautiful 335i for a screaming deal off of Facebook Marketplace. But the problem is that the car runs like total Now, if you couldn't tell right there, the car is running on three cylinders. It's got misfire codes for four, five, and six, and I think that it's because the DME is damaged. Today, we're gonna go ahead and try to fix it for $12 in materials and see if we can get the car running on all six cylinders. So let's go ahead and take a look at what I have behind me and what the plan is for today. So that's right, we're gonna be doing the dreaded DME MOSFETs repair. Here are these little uh, circuit board components. They're called MOSFETs, and they tend to fail on the engine computer for the 335s, especially the younger ones that have a different MOSFET. This one I got off of Amazon. It's a pack of 10, so we have plenty of extras, and they only cost us $12. These upgraded MOSFETs are gonna be installed on the DME, and they're gonna complete the bad circuits in order to make the car run on all six cylinders. Besides the MOSFETs, we also needed some supplies so I have some soldering paste right here and then a hot air rework station this is kind of like a wireless soldering iron in the way that it throws hot air into one spot and it allows you to pull off certain circuit board components in order to replace them and I think it's gonna come in handy in the future so this was about $60 and the MOSFETs 12 you know you could say about $75 in supplies here but this is gonna be reusable and it's gonna come in handy in the future uh, so let's go ahead and go outside grab the DME first we need to pull it in side and dismantle it and then we're going to test the old MOSFETs to see just how many had failed. All right, so we've acquired the DME, and I just wanna point out that the MSD80 DMEs are the ones that have the older MOSFETs and that tend to fail more often, but this might apply to other DMEs as well. Definitely the MOSFETs that we ordered are upgraded apparently, so they'll handle more voltage for the injectors and coils and such, and they won't be prone to failing as the old ones did. So we have to get these little clips off of the corners, and then we'll be able to separate the housing here, and then we'll start testing with our multimeter to see which ones have failed. Well, that was extraordinarily simple. Uh, we have the DME uncovered now, and if I rotate it like this, we'll see that these are the six MOSFETs that control the injectors and I believe the coils as well. They're rated for a specific amount of voltage to pass through them, and the new ones that we have are rated even higher. So just looking here, this one seems to be a little discolored compared to the rest. Now the order of the MOSFETs is gonna be one, two, three, four, five, and six. And since this one is discolored and we have a bank two problem, these three are connected. So basically when one of them fails, you get the entire bank that tends to start misfiring and cutting out. So we're gonna go ahead and test all these. There should be continuity between the middle pin and the backing plate, which is soldered to the board. And then there should be a certain amount of resistance through the outside poles. And if there is continuity with no resistance, then that means that it's basically failed. So I'm gonna grab my multimeter here and then we'll test them out. All right, so I just tested all these MOSFETs and I was able to get a successful ohm reading on the outer pins and a successful continuity reading on the inner pins on all of them. So now I'm a little bit confused because I thought that you know it was kind of an easy way to determine if they were bad or not. But since we already ordered the new MOSFETs, I'm gonna go ahead and desolder these and install the new ones as well for two reasons. One, it'll it might fix our problem. Two, if it doesn't fix our problem, at least we'll have the upgraded MOSFETs 
and we'll be able to not worry about this issue in the future. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start warming up the air rework station. I'll have a link to that in the description below. You wanna set it to 420 degrees Celsius, and then we're gonna go ahead and point it at the MOSFET and try to heat up the solder around it and slowly pull it off the board, and then we'll be able to install the new one. And as you can see, I have some solder paste here. I'll also put a link to this in the description as well. It's a special mix of lead and solder so that it's made for kind of this application here. But we'll go ahead and use that to solder the new MOSFETs on here. And hopefully by the end of this video, we'll be testing out with some new ignition coils that I got to see if we can get the car running correctly. Well, I don't know what the clock says, but that's that felt like 20 or 30 minutes that it took to get that thing off. And I feel like besides the solder, there was probably a little bit of glue under there. Uh, and as you can see, I totally dish. Oh, fuck, that's still hot. Sorry, as you can see, I totally destroyed some of the pins on this thing, uh, thinking that, you know, the pins were what was holding it down. So I kind of bent them up and then I bent them a little too far and they broke off this thing. But yeah, I just had to sit there and cook it for a while. And uh, let's see, is there any glue here? Yeah, it looks like there might be a little bit of glue there. So uh, what we have to do now is apply a little bit of our solder paste and then we'll go ahead and take one of the MOSFETs and apply it here and heat it up enough that the uh, circuit board sticks to the MOSFET and then we'll add a little bit on the pins as well, make sure that it's 100% soldered down and then go to the rest of them. All right, we've got the first one successfully installed. It's this one right here, I think number, whatever number that is. And uh, you wanna make sure the pins are really well soldered on. That's easy to see visually, but the backing plate has to be soldered on very well as well. And what you wanna do is you wanna take your pliers and try to wiggle it around. And if you can, then it is not on. But if you can't move it around, then it's probably a good seal. And if you look over here, there is a little bit of solder on the board, like a little, uh, like a little solder ball in there and that kind of tells you that the solder has melted and is trying to escape out the sides. So that's completely on there. Now all we got to do is knock out the other five and then we'll go ahead and uh, hopefully be testing this out very soon. All right, so I think we're done with the hard part, which was soldering all those on. Probably took me about an hour and a half, I would say. And when I called up my local electronic repair shop, they did tell me that it could take about 15 minutes per MOSFET. And for that reason, they would probably have charged me about $150 to $200 to do this job. So for $50 for the tool, a little bit of solder paste and $12 for the MOSFETs, we're saving a ton of money and we get to keep the tool and have this valuable experience in the book for next time. So all we have to do now is take our cover, put it back on here, and then we're gonna go out to the car, install the DME, and then we'll have to install our ignition coils, and then hopefully this car will run on all six cylinders. 
And by the way, this thing gets really hot. Like the whole ECU is hot because of the hot air rework station. So uh, just something to keep in mind is that you kind of start to get a little bit faster as you go through the MOSFETs, but don't rush and make sure that you test all of them to make sure that the backing plate is fully seated on the circuit board because that is the main ground for it. So yeah, let's go ahead and put that cover on and test it out. Right, it's time to get our bets in and see if this car starts and runs good. Honestly, I'm super scared to see what the result is, but here you go, live reaction. Let's start it up. It's definitely, definitely still misfiring. Let's go ahead and check the codes and see what's going on. First things first, let's go ahead and clear the fault memory. That way we'll be able to tell what comes up new. So no fault codes found, and now let's try to start it again. And of course, now is the moment that my scanner decides to take a and just freeze up. All right, now we've got our handy dandy Foxwell Scanny. Let's go ahead and get to that DME. And I know that we cleared the codes, so let's see what the new fault codes are. Misfire, several cylinders, four, five, and six. Possible internal fault. So, hmm, we might have something besides the MOSFETs that are bad on this car. Right now, what I'm thinking is that it might be injector related because um, it's definitely not coil related and I don't think it's spark plug related because I don't think that you would just get misfires on three cylinders from three bad spark plugs in a row, but I could be wrong. Uh, what we need to do now is probably go ahead and swap the injectors from front to back. So one, two, three, swap them with four, five, and six, and then we'll see if the problem follows and then we can go from there. All right, so we've got all the injectors removed and I also discovered that there's a broken bolt down there. I'm gonna see if I can pull it out. It's actually right at the tip of my finger, you can see it. But you can see that the first three injectors are working and they have a ton of oil on them. The last three are just dry and they look like, you know, they've just not been firing. So what we're gonna do is take number six, put it in number one, five to two, four to three, three to four and so on, kind of swap them around. And I made sure to take pictures of the uh, coding numbers for them, the programming numbers. And that way we can go into INPA and get them programmed correctly so that the injector rate is synonymous with the DME. So let's go ahead and reinstall these and then do some coding. Well, you know what? My battery is dead on my laptop that I would usually use for INPA. So we're gonna do something that I usually wouldn't recommend. Uh, we'll read the codes here, see all the misfires. So we'll go back and we'll clear the codes. So now the codes are cleared and we should be able to still start the motor, even though the injectors aren't programmed. We should, oh man, injectors four, five, six, what the heck? All right, let's, let's try it anyways. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's definitely, definitely still misfiring. Hmm. And the DME says four, five, and six internal. Hmm. Well, now I am definitely a little confused. There's a couple of things that could be going on here. We could have failed at the DME MOSFET install. You know, if four, five, and six, we messed up one of those MOSFETs, it could be causing that bank to come down. Um, since we moved the injectors all around though, I don't think that this is an injector problem. So we're gonna have to probably check more wiring schematics and see what could possibly, possibly be causing it to come down like this. So yeah, I guess that's really all that we can do is just keep our head down and keep trying to diagnose what the problem is. Moments later. All right, I just went and checked all these and then for good measure, I added extra solder to the uh, to the little diodes that come out of the MOSFET. So we'll try this again, but if this isn't it, I think we're gonna go ahead and have to look into replacing the injectors. And I think that I may be able to convince my friend Max with his 335 to borrow his injectors and test them on my car. And that way I'll know for sure which ones I need to buy, probably all six of them, uh, but I'd rather know for sure before buying the injectors because it might still be a DME but let's go ahead and try this out all right so now it's time for the moment of truth take two I'm really not expecting a lot of different results I guess that settles it. We definitely have more of a problem here than we originally anticipated. So I definitely have more work to do on this car than I thought I was going to have and I guess we'll probably need to look at the injectors next because that is definitely what it seems to be at this point. Although it's kind of weird like I said that the injectors didn't follow the fault code so taking the last three and putting them towards the front didn't really change the bank that the injector failure is happening on so we're gonna probably end up trying out some injectors that we know are good we can install them and get them programmed right now I'm having an issue with my computer and I need to reboot it so that I can get info working again but once we do that we'll be able to know for sure because if we put in some injectors that we know are working and the car doesn't run on all six cylinders then we'll probably have to invest into a new DME, one that we can program to the VIN of the car, and that way we will solve this problem for good. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know I wish I could just snap my fingers and make this all better and make it work and make this a happy lesson learned. But unfortunately, sometimes you run into issues like this. I hope you guys enjoyed the content though and learning how to do the MOSFETs repair. And if you're doing this on year 335, I wish you the best of luck and hopefully it solves all your misfiring issues. But for me, I definitely have a little more work to do, like I said. So go ahead and like this video to help me out. Comment down below what you think the issue is and subscribe to the channel if you love 335 content because we have a lot more coming. As always, I hope everyone has an awesome day and we'll see you next time.